firstly, timing your run. So if you have, particularly if you haven't played for a while, typically haven't, um, you're not going to be used to the change of direction demands, the jumping demands, and of course the contest. I would time your run on those big three and just get used to first the running loads, um, getting in and, and timing your run in terms of your um, exposure to the sport. So we're in end of September now. I wouldn't be worried too much about um, training for football specifically at this time of year, but I would be making sure you've got a specific running program um, like our online program, so you can check that out. We've got a free trial. And, a, and a start building some resilience and robustness in the gym, um, not doing bodybuilding, powerlifting training, but doing some more um, different planes of motion, some moving your body through different ranges of motion, single leg, single arm exercises, um, so a, a real team, a uh, field-based, sorry, um, gym program would be a great place to start. From there, tip number two is making sure you're as lean as possible. So your body fat is um, as, so if you're carrying a bit of extra weight, obviously that's uh, extra load on your joints, which is not going to help um, anyone, but particularly when you're older. So if you can drop a little bit of body fat over this block pre-Christmas, but through healthy living, healthy eating and following a a training program, um, stripping a bit of body fat, increasing a little bit of lean muscle mass around our trunk and our legs, uh, that's going to help reduce the likelihood of injuries, particularly soft tissue injuries, things like uh, your calf, groins, quads, uh, even hamstrings. Um, so by reducing that excess body fat uh, and increasing some functional lean muscle mass, that's going to put you in, in good stead and a good area of focus on now. And then from there, something that will pay dividends throughout the whole preparation to getting back to playing footy or prolonging your career will just be general um, general health. So looking after your sleep routine, looking after your nutrition, making it, eating plenty of colourful foods and getting all as many different ingredients as you can so you're well nourished. Um, your food is as high quality if you can from farmers markets. You're eating seasonally. Um, making sure that you, the fuel you're putting into your body, like the, that Ben will be presenting on with our academy members uh, in October, um, is of high quality. So it's allowing your body to um, not be further inflamed through bad eating, but also you're going to have a good amount of energy. It's going to help your body adapt to the new stresses if you haven't played the game for a while. Um, you want to reduce um, any high any further risk and you want to try and enhance your body's ability to adapt to that load through good lifestyle so sleep nutrition get those two key areas uh, in check some form of restorative movement like uh, clinical pilates or uh, iyengar yoga something that's low load on the body but it's movement based uh, you're improving your stability your balance your range of motion uh, and it's really joint friendly it would be a great uh, thing to start in the off season and continue throughout the whole preseason season. It's something that you'll notice as athletes get older, um, the pro athletes that is, they uh, gravitate gravitate towards those two modalities quite naturally uh, as it feels intuitively good for their bodies, um, but also it's not going to take away from your um, your training. It's not high fatigue in nature as long as you're not doing things like um, Bikram yoga, of course, and, and the fitness-based Pilates. It's got to be the slow control tempo stuff. Um, so making sure you've got a good routine down pat there. Have an individual uh, strength program that's building and focus on resilience. So if you've you've got an injury history, let's say uh, Achilles tendinopathy, patella tendinopathy, a bad back, uh, anything where you've had these previous injuries, you want to make sure that you're doing some work throughout the week um, to build those body, uh, build those areas up uh, as they're your weakest links. So if you're not um, putting in quality work around those areas, you're putting yourself at risk, uh, especially those those areas that have had injury, we know are at higher risk for further injury, recurrence injury. So if you've had um, a few hamstring injuries in the past, making sure you're sprinting regularly, making sure you're building good eccentric strength um, through your gym training and you're putting dedicated work into that into that program. If you haven't got uh, access to or you not don't have the knowledge to be able to put that program together, direct message me. We've got coaches that can customise a program for you to specifically um, target those uh, injuries or uh, past injuries that you've had. And then throughout the whole process of the off-season, pre-season, um, the one thing they do have on your side is maturity. So make sure you listen to that body, into that um, listen to your body um, and 
and that intuition as well. So when your body's starting to tell you you're on the edge, um, that might be where you put in a little bit more work and energy on your recovery. Um, it might be where you substitute, or you might um, you know, finish a run a little bit earlier because you can feel your calf tighten up. Um, you might, instead of going for that run, you might work do a bike session instead because your feet are sore or your plantar fascia is sore whatever it is listen to your body wherever those niggly spots are don't just push through them um, i think that's critical um, the body generally starts to tell us um, some signs before it becomes an overload issue things like shin splints plantar fasciitis uh, any of that tendon tendinopathy so make sure you listen to it from the early signs put a um, good program in place